Hey guys, I'm really excited because today I'm going to show you how I make my own natural shampoo. This gentle shampoo will help prevent hair fall, it helps heal scalp conditions like dandruff and itchy scalp, and it leaves your hair so soft and shiny. And I did not invent this recipe, it's a recipe that's been used in India for centuries. However, I love it so much and I wanted to show you exactly how I make and use it because I think it's absolutely incredible and it's the perfect thing to add into your holistic hair care routine. So to make this shampoo, you will need 7 to 8 pieces of dried shikakai pods, 7 to 8 pieces of dried rita, I like to use the kind that already has its seeds taken out, a small handful of dried amla berries, and 1 to 2 tablespoons of fenugreek seeds. You may need to adjust the proportions of these ingredients for your hair type, depending if you have oily hair, dry hair, thick hair, thin hair. So just play around with it and find what works best for your hair type. So let's take a look at some of the benefits of our key ingredients. First up we have shikakai. Shikakai translates to fruit for hair, and it's been used for centuries as a cleanser for the hair and body. It contains saponins, so that's why it kind of suds up and can act like a cleanser. It's rich in vitamins and antioxidants, so it helps promote hair growth, it helps reduce hair fall, its antifungal properties help with things like dandruff, and it has a low pH, so it won't strip your hair of its oils, so it's basically amazing for your hair. Next we have Rita, also known as soap nuts, and you might have seen them before being advertised as a natural laundry detergent alternative. And that's because they also contain saponins, so they're a gentle way to wash your hair, skin, or even your clothes. And they also contain natural antibacterial and antifungal properties to help with scalp conditions. And then we have amla, commonly known as amalaki or Indian gooseberry. Amla is so amazing for the hair. It's extremely high in vitamin C. Amla is known to strengthen the hair roots, reducing hair fall, and encouraging healthy hair growth. It's even said to prevent premature graying. It's just wonderful for the scalp and hair. And next we have fenugreek seeds, also known as meti seeds, and these help prevent hair fall and help promote healthy hair growth. With regular use, people say it helps thicken their hair, and it makes a great detangler because of its high mucilage content, so it adds that slip to the shampoo that helps kind of condition and add shine to your hair. And fenugreek is also amazing to help eliminate dandruff and other scalp conditions, and it just adds volume to the hair and makes your hair feel soft and shiny and smooth. I love fenugreek. You can also add in other ingredients to suit your hair type as well. For instance, I love adding in marshmallow root because like fenugreek, it helps condition and detangle the hair. And both fenugreek and marshmallow will slightly thicken the shampoo as well. You can add things like neem or tulsi to help scalp conditions or herbs like rosemary and sage to help condition the hair. But today I wanted to keep it really simple. One thing to note is shikakai and amla can darken your hair over time, so if you have really blonde hair, you might want to take that into consideration. So place your herbs into a bowl, and then add about 3 cups of filtered water, and let that sit overnight. This is how it'll look the next morning. You can see it's already starting to foam, you guys, it's like real shampoo, it's so cool. However, we're going to cook it to make it even more concentrated. So I'm just going to transfer the herbs and liquids into a pot and bring that to a boil. And once it's boiling, I turn it down to a low heat and let it simmer for about 10 minutes. Then I turn the heat off completely and just let it cool down. And I'm just taking my hands and kind of mashing it up to get all the goodness out of those herbs. Now I just strain it to separate the liquid from the solid matter. You can probably even use a nut milk bag if you want. Then I transfer it into a squeeze bottle. Now you could just put this in a cup and just pour it over your head. However, the squeeze bottle method is the best way to use this in my experience. So that's what I'm doing. This shampoo will last around a week in the refrigerator, or you can freeze it in an ice cube tray and you can just thaw some out whenever you need to wash your hair. 
And if you're wondering how much of this shampoo you need to use, well, for my long, thick hair that's longer than my waist, I use the whole bottle. And then for someone with shorter hair, like maybe up to their chest, they could probably get away with half a bottle. That's how much my mom uses and her hair's a bit medium length. And if you have really short hair, you can get away with a quarter or even one eighth of the bottle. When my dad was using this, he was able to get many uses out of one bottle. So just test it out and see how much you need for your hair length and hair type. Now I find this works best when first applied to the scalp on dry hair. So I just take my squeeze bottle and kind of separate my hair so I can apply the shampoo directly to the scalp. Since I have a lot of hair, this helps me get it right into the roots and I just find it's easier to apply this way. I use about half of the bottle for my scalp and then I put the rest on the length of my hair. You'll be shocked at how well it cleans your hair. This won't lather like traditional shampoo, so it might take some getting used to, but it really cleans your hair without the lather. I guess it almost feels more like you're doing a hair rinse. And I sort of just massage that in, and I like to leave it on my hair for 2-5 to five minutes. And a little tip, if your ends are really dry, you can first apply a bit of oil like jojoba or argan oil into your ends before shampooing your hair. And to apply it to the rest of my hair, I like to wet my hair from mid-length to the ends, and then I take a little basin or a bowl, and I squeeze the rest of the shampoo into that, and then I fill it up with shower water, and just dunk the length of my hair into the basin, and swish it around. So I like to apply it onto my dry scalp, but then I prefer my ends to be wet when I apply it. And this is just what works for me since I have such long hair, but you can also apply the shampoo directly to the length of your hair, or you can just put the shampoo into a cup or a basin and dump that over your hair and scalp. And this is very important, make sure you keep your eyes closed while using the shampoo because if it gets in your eyes, it stings like crazy and it's going to leave your eyes bloodshot. It's gentle on your hair, but not on your eyes. And believe it or not, I usually don't use conditioner on my hair when using this shampoo. I find that it leaves my hair feeling nice on its own. But you could throw some conditioner on your ends if your hair is really dry and damaged. Or you could just finish it off with an herbal rinse or an apple cider vinegar rinse. And then I just usually air dry my hair after using this to keep my hair as healthy as possible. And I will mention, at first I had difficulty tracking down these herbs in their whole form, so I will link down below where I purchased mine from, but if you are having a hard time finding these ingredients, you can use the powdered versions since they're usually more widely available. I personally prefer using the whole pods versus the powder since it just seems more fresh and I know it's pure. But my second favorite way of making this shampoo is by making a tea out of the powders. So I'll quickly show you how I do that. You can start with about a tablespoon of each powder, then add around one cup of hot or boiling water to the powdered herbs, and let that sit for about 15 to 30 minutes. I just let it sit until it's totally cooled off, and then strain it through a nut milk bag. And the straining part is very important if you have long thick hair like me or the powder residue can be kind of hard to rinse out of your hair. And you can use this tea the exact same way I showed you a second ago. So with that batch, I just used the Shikakai, Rita, and Amla powder. But here I wanted to show you another batch I made where I added a bit of fenugreek. And you can see how it's a bit thicker in consistency. So this is a good example of how fenugreek can thicken it up. Oh, and you can use the leftover pulp as a gentle cleansing scrub on your body and face to make use of it. And then another option for using the powders is to just add enough hot water into the powders to create a paste. And then apply that to your scalp and hair and leave it on for a while to soak in and then rinse it out. I don't like using the paste method myself because I find it's messy and hard to rinse out of my hair. But if you have shorter hair, it could be a good option for you. So that's how you can make your own natural and organic shampoo at home. I really hope you enjoyed this video and feel free to follow me on Instagram. I post lots of hair related content, vintage dresses, gemstones, holistic health, all sorts of fun stuff. So I will link that down below. I love you guys so much and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!